They speak the same language, they love the same yerba mate, they are both world champions and share a tremendous passion for barbecue, or un asado. These two countries have so many similarities that when deciding where to live, work remotely or retire abroad, people ask, Uruguay or Argentina? Which one is better? Or are they pretty much the same? I will already answer this question for you. No, they are not the same. While so many things are similar between those two neighbors, others, like the rhythm of life, the social issues, and, most of all, the cost of living, change tremendously between Argentina and Uruguay. To discover the pros, cons, and the cost of living, how much you would need to spend to live and retire in Argentina and Uruguay. And our comparison will be apples to apples. First, we will give the pros, cons, and cost of living in the capital of Argentina, Buenos Aires versus the capital of Uruguay, Montevideo. Then will come an even more interesting comparison between living in one of the most desired cities for expats in Argentina, Mendoza, versus its Uruguayan rival, Maldonado. Then we'll compare how your pension or income from abroad will be taxed in both countries. That is very important, so watch until the end. And then I will give you a final score, which country is the best right now for you. Ready? So let's start comparing the pros and cons of the two capitals, Buenos Aires and Montevideo. We start with safety. And here there is a surprise. A lot of Argentinians would think that Buenos Aires is dangerous and Montevideo is safer. In reality, however, they are not that different. Buenos Aires improved a lot in this aspect. The number of robberies in the last years dropped to half of what it was 15 years ago. Meanwhile, Montevideo concentrates most of the Uruguayan crime occurrences. The countryside of Uruguay is way safer than Montevideo. With the improvement of the Argentinian capital and the worsening of the Uruguayan counterpart, nowadays they have similar numbers. However, that is important to remember. Buenos Aires is way larger and likely the dangerous parts of Buenos Aires are more dangerous than the dangerous parts of Montevideo. So in terms of violence, we have a tie between the two capitals. The next factor is the weather. Since the two cities are only 213 kilometers apart, you might think that both would have a similar climate. However, they are slightly different. Montevideo has a bit less of rainfall, is less humid, and during summer is not as hot as Buenos Aires. But the most important and the worst is how different those cities react to their weather conditions. Buenos Aires is a large city that might quickly turn chaotic if it rains a lot. In Montevideo, this might also happen, but not that frequently. So here, the point is for Montevideo. Let's talk now about private healthcare. Buenos Aires offers excellent private healthcare with modern facilities and highly trained professionals. Even the best hospitals like Otamendi and Hospital Austral have costs much lower than mid-range hospitals in the US. And hold on, because we'll talk more about costs in a few minutes. Montevideo also has a good healthcare system with quality private healthcare services, but not in the same proportion as Buenos Aires and the costs might be higher. Point for the Argentinians. And since you are talking about capitals and large cities, pollution is another important aspect. Here is a clear point for Montevideo. It's smaller, it's cleaner, and has a geographic advantage, since it's closer to the ocean. 3-2 for Montevideo until now. And now time to know about the cost of living, and what better indicator for the living costs than housing. So I selected a few apartments and houses that you can afford paying between 800 to 900 per month in rent or mortgage in each city. In Buenos Aires, for $800, you rent a 45 square meter, one room apartment in the district of Palermo, Hollywood. Palermo, Hollywood is an upper class district full of green. I had been there a few times, nice place. A bit noisy if you live close to a bar or a club, but other than that, it's a fine neighborhood. Also in this range of price, $850, there are larger apartments in Recoleta, which might not be as good as Palermo Hollywood, but it's still okay. The largest place I found for less than $900 is this apartment with 88 square meters and nice large windows. That is important in such a humid place. In Montevideo, the apartments I found for this price are between 40 to 80 square meters, on average a bit smaller than those in Buenos Aires. But, one curious thing that I noticed is that many apartments in this range of prices are in buildings with swimming pools. 
And they are in quite expensive areas, like this one in Punta Carretas. Punta Carretas, by the way, is a very beautiful, very safe, and very well connected by public transport district from Montevideo. So in terms of housing costs, I would say that it's also a tie. Buenos Aires has bigger apartments for less than $900, but the one in Montevideo have better amenities. So we end with a victory for Montevideo in the general with 4 to 3 against Buenos Aires. But we all know that when you are planning to move to retire abroad or work remotely, you will not choose the capital. They are among the most expensive places, after all. So what if we compare one of the most attractive cities for expats in Argentina, which is Mendoza, versus Maldonado, the Uruguayan city that is a favorite among foreigners? Mendoza itself is not a big city. It has 115,000 residents, but it's inside a metropolitan area of 1 million residents. It's a wine region close to the Andes Mountains and the border with Chile. Maldonado in Uruguay is a city with less than 100,000 residents in the Atlantic coast, very enticing for beachgoers and those who enjoy the sea breeze. So yeah, this is a difficult clash. Both Maldonado and Mendoza are in regions that have immense natural beauty. So let's start our comparison, and the first thing we will compare is safety. Mendoza generally has lower crime rates compared to large Argentinian cities. The homicide rate is very low, 3 per 100,000 people, which is less than half of the US, for example. But there are other types of more frequent crimes, especially pickpocketers, thieves, and so on. That is what a local told us about Mendoza. It's not heaven, of course, it has some favelas, and there's some crime, but it's only present in the outer neighborhoods. Good areas are 100% safe. So safe that I'm sure I can be walking around midnight, looking at my phone, and nothing is gonna happen. Close quote. Meanwhile, the Uruguayan rival, Maldonado, has a very strong touristic appeal, and therefore has also more surveillance. During the peak season, there are some occurrences of thievery and pickpockets, but out of the season, it's very calm. It's actually perceived as one of the safest places in Uruguay. So here, the verdict is point for Maldonado. The size difference that benefited Maldonado when talking about safety plays in favor of Mendoza if we talk about private healthcare. Mendoza has a more ample offer of private hospitals. Also, according to locals, the public hospitals there are quite decent when compared to those from the rest of Argentina. The biggest issue is the waiting time for many procedures. Point for Mendoza. In terms of social life and entertainment, the two cities are quite different. Known for its wine culture, Mendoza offers numerous wineries and wine-related events. But there are also other options, and Mendoza receives a lot of tourists, especially from Argentina and Brazil. There is even a tradition among Brazilians that their first trips abroad are either to Mendoza, Buenos Aires, or Bariloche. Maldonado also has plenty of options for entertainment, much more than what you would expect for a city of 100,000 residents. This is because in the region of Maldonado is Punta del Este. Imagine Punta del Este has a South American version of Las Vegas, always smaller. It has casinos, concert venues, and good restaurants. During the tourist season, there is a lot to do there. However, off-season, Maldonado might turn a bit boring. So in terms of social life and entertainment, point for Mendoza due to its year-round options. And what about the weather? Here both cities are also very, very different. Mendoza has a semi-arid climate with hot summers and mild winters. It experiences low humidity and significant sunshine through the year. If you don't like rain, Mendoza is the place for you. Since it rains less than 45 days per year on average. Meanwhile, Maldonado has a temperate climate with mild summers and cool winters. It experiences higher humidity and more rainfall, and it has the four seasons of the year well marked. To say which one is better is quite subjective. None are really bad. So let's give it a tie. So far the score is Mendoza 3, Maldonado 2. Now it's time for the last factor. The one that might decide which city is the best, the cost of living. And again, we compare housing prices. Since this is the lion's share of the cost of living, if you plan to retire in Argentina or Uruguay. I found that Maldonado in Uruguay has prices very similar to Montevideo. In general, for less than $900, you find apartments between 45 and 75 square meters. 
Like this one in Playa Mansa. Playa Mansa, by the way, is one of the trendiest beaches in the city. It's interesting to see that in Maldonado, as in Montevideo, the apartments have some nice facilities, and most of them, despite being small, have access to shared swimming pools. And what did we find in Mendoza for less than $900 monthly? That was a surprise for me. But before we view it, I would like to ask a small favor. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. So in Mendoza, for $900 or less, I found much larger properties. This apartment here, for example, has 100 square meters and costs only $800 per month, with a large swimming pool, a fully equipped gym, and the superior quality of the finishing and furniture evident. And all that for $800. It was not the only one that I found for this price. There is this other one here, also with a swimming pool, a playground, and a large garden. And the same price, $800 per month. In the Greater Mendoza, I found a 150 square meter apartment in an A-class building for $900. Looks more like an expensive hotel than an ordinary apartment building. But if instead of an apartment, you are looking for a house, a spacious house, you could easily take this 180 square meter house in Mendoza for $900. So yes, Mendoza, the Argentinian wine capital, won our cost comparison against Maldonado and also won the overall comparison because the final score is Mendoza 4, Maldonado 3. If you prefer to live in a capital city, Montevideo in Uruguay has some advantages over Buenos Aires. Otherwise, Argentina, and especially Mendoza, appears to be a much better alternative. Not saying that Uruguay is bad, it's probably the most stable country in entire South America. But the cost of living there is high, at least when we compare it to Argentina. But wait, what about the taxes? If you are moving to either Uruguay or Argentina and your pension will come from abroad, the taxes are an important aspect. Which country is better than? If you retire in Argentina during the first 12 months, you will not pay any income tax, period. After that, you will still not pay taxes on income from pensions from abroad, but you might need to pay taxes on income from dividends of your investments, around 15%. The amount of taxes can be reduced due to taxation agreements between Argentina and your country, but still, there is a tax to pay over dividends and some capital gains. On the other side of the Rio de la Plata, we have Uruguay, and moving your tax residence there offers some unique tax benefits, including, and listen to that carefully, a 10-year tax holiday on foreign sourced income. And since new tax residents are not taxed before one year, like in Argentina, that means an effective tax holiday of 11 years. During this period, you won't pay taxes on income generated outside Uruguay or on interest and dividends from non-Uruguayan companies. After 11 years, you start to pay taxes, but even then, it's only 12% less than the 15% of Argentina, and income from owning or renting property abroad remains tax-free. Incredible, right? Honestly, there are not many countries in the world that have so advantageous tax schemes for expatriates like Uruguay. So yes, Uruguay is more expensive than Argentina, and yes, Mendoza is better than Maldonado. But these tax advantages offered for those thinking of retiring Uruguay might easily change the final score of which one is the best for expatriates. So what do you think, Uruguay or Argentina? Let us know in the comment section. Now, if one of those two countries interested you, check out our specific video about Argentina here on your left or about Uruguay here on your right. And I can guarantee you that in both videos, you'll find some enforcing information that might change your mind.